fiction children's books about uh, El Dia de los Muertos. And uh, it fits into this whole talk in that I am looking very much at the ideal reader for uh, these books. And uh, the ideal reader is not necessarily who we think for these books. And why look at uh, books about El Dia de los Muertos? Well, first, obviously, we have a growing diversity uh, in the United States. We are called on uh, the multicultural education agenda to affirm our students' diverse backgrounds, to build on our students' local and global experiences. And uh, children's books, however, uh, as we've come to see, can reinforce cultural models uh, that support dominant Eurocentric middle-class ideologies. And this becomes problematic uh, in nonfiction ch uh, children's picture books when we expect a neutral presentation. And at my library in, in Columbus, Ohio, the library system, there are 49 copies of eight uh, nonfiction children's books about El Dia de los Muertos, and all of those books are in circulation by mid-October. It's not possible to check them out, and this has been uh, over the last two years in my following the circulation of these books. So they're out uh, from mid-October to mid-November, and then they're back in. <laughs> So I think an important part before jumping into the analysis of these books is really understanding the basis of uh, the celebration. Octavio Paz uh, says that a Mexican person is familiar with death, jokes about it, caresses it, sleeps with it, celebrates it. It is one of his favorite toys and his most <laughs> steadfast love. And there's also a traditional Mexican saying that uh, people die three times. The first death occurs when the body stops functioning, the second occurs when the body is returned to the earth, and the third and final death occurs only when the person is not remembered any longer by the living. And this really ties into uh, the celebration of Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead originates with the Aztecs in pre-Hispanic uh, Mesoamerica. The Aztecs commemorate the death on a year-long basis, they viewed death as a cycle of life, a never-ending cycle of life. Uh, they believed that the spirits of deceased people um, continue to live and visit relatives. They honored uh, the, the feast of the little dead ones and the feast of the adult dead over <coughs> the course of months uh, during the summer, July and August. And they celebrated an annual reunion with the spirits of loved ones by preparing an offering uh, of the deceased's favorite foods and comforts. So then we have Cortez and the conquistadors come and, and invade uh, Mexico and claim the territory for Spain. And in an effort to control the native people, sent Catholic missionaries to New Spain to abolish all indigenous, indigenous religions and indoctrinate native peoples in Catholicism. So one of the things that the missionaries recognized in that uh, the native celebrations of death well, this is a great way we're going to overlay Catholic Holy Days onto these Native celebrations, and that there will be a transfer of belief system to Catholicism. So all saints and all souls day are overlaid on Native traditions and limited. These month-long, year-long <laughs> celebrations are limited to the first two days in November. However, although Native people acknowledged All Saints and All Soul Days, they still continued to celebrate uh, the spirits of the children and the adults and their families on these days. Even into the late 18th century, the Spanish government, right before the uh, Independence War of Independence in 1810, they're still <coughs> very upset that Native traditions are continuing and trying to squelch uh, gatherings in cemeteries. And according, to, according to anthropologist uh, Marta Montero, Contemporary Day of the Dead traditions reflect a hybridism that is kind of pagan, but put together by Mexicans in a way that is uniquely Mexican. No other culture in the world celebrates in the way we do. Uh, so to begin this analysis, Alma Florada suggests that the merit of a Latino children's book is determined by the author's intention, knowledge, sensitivity, responsibility, and artistry. And so we're going to take a look at some of those things today. Uh, these are the eight books that came from my library system, all of which were out, uh, again, for the month. Diane Holt Goldsmith's Day of the Dead. This is a, a photo essay 
Pablo remembers, George Ancona, and the other photo essay is uh, Catherine Lasky's Day of the Dead. And then the five remaining books are all part of various holiday series, uh, Celebrations in My World, Day of the Dead, Gleason, Dia de los Muertos, this is Heinrich's, Wade's book, Linda Lowry's book, Nowenski's book, and actually I have a ninth book, this is, and I got this because it's a 2010 publication from another library system uh, that is Latin American Celebrations, another day of the day book. So I thought I could send these around and you can look at them as I chat. Um, so, I'm going to be talking about the implied author, the ideal reader, and the paratext of these books. And the implied author is this image that we have of the author based on the text. And this implied author can also uh, reflect dominant values and beliefs. The ideal reader, as we've already heard, um, is, is who is the perfect reader for this book, and, as I'll, uh, Stevens and Aldalma, who is the reader that is going to get the author's position for this book? And the paratext looks at uh, descriptive blurbs, end page matter, Library of Congress, categorizations, and so we'll be looking at that as well. I have to apologize for my clumsy fingers here. Okay, so when an implied author says to the reader, does the celebration of death sound strange to you? <laughs> Mexicans even make trips to the graveyard. Picnicking in a cemetery with dead relatives may sound like a scary scene in a Halloween movie. <laughs> Going to the cemetery is a happy time, not a sad time. And then my favorite, do you know a Mexican-American? <laughs> Children's book author. 
So did it really just so happen? <laughs> and in this excerpt, we also, we don't have any agency assigned to anyone. We don't have the missionaries, we don't have the native people, it's just this coincidence. In these books, we also have a conflation of Halloween with Day of the Dead. Um, some towns mix Halloween with Day of the Dead tradition, traditions. Children don't say trick or treat. They holler calaveras, calaveras, which means skulls in Spanish. In some neighborhoods, children go skulling. And on the eve of El Dia de los Muertos, they holler, they holler calaveras, calaveras. It's almost as if they were saying trick or treat because they are asking for sweets, um, fruit, and money. So again, catering to this child who recognizes trick-or-treating, but never really defining what is Halloween, because it's entirely different from El Dia de los Huertos. Even in Heinrich's book, coming up here, she goes on to say that they're different, but then in her illustration, we have October 31st, complete with a Dracula, because Dracula is part of the Day of the Dead. Um, <laughs> not. Uh, and then we have, uh, on All Souls Day, she does have the, a picture of an angel to represent celebrating the death of children, the spirits of children, and All Saints Day, um, we have a woman. But very, uh, in looking at this book and relying on this book to explain Day of the Dead to children, it's very convoluted um, and really requires a lot of background information to tease it apart on the part of the teacher and on the part of the readers. In looking at the paratext, the Library of Congress uh, is not very helpful either, unfortunately. All of these books, with the exception of Ancona's book, Pablo Remembers, all of them highlight the Catholic holiday as the first category and not Mexican social life and customs, which I find quite remarkable. And you'll see that not all of them uh, uh, even include Mexican social life and customs. We even have one that has all souls, all saints, and all saints day um, as both. So this is another issue in looking at books that get the Catholic uh, mainstream Catholicism privileged and, and totally undermining the intent of the book, but also uh, uh, undermining the culture as well. I do have to say, in Pablo Remembers and in Days of the Dead, um, both of them do have nice moments of spirituality. Pablo turns to Shaula, Shaula in the uh, cemetery, and he says, I think Abuelita is happy that we are all here tonight with her. And um, this is a really nice photograph uh, that really blurs the, the borders in uh, Lasky's book. And this quote, The body may stop, but the spirit needs to live. It's that ritualistic life-death cycle that is particularly Mexican and so haunting, and I think this image uh, really captures that, and, and that is Mar Marta Montero's uh, quote. So with that, um, with the exception of Ancono's book, all, most all of the books uh, position do not include young Latinos as part of their ideal readers, even though these are nonfiction books about Latino culture. Most of the books suggest that Mexican spiritualism is exotic. And most uh, take a tourist lens, which is complicit with dominant ideologies. And no single book offers multiple perspectives. Um, so obviously, there is certainly room for more <coughs> nonfiction books by uh, insider authors who are sensitive, knowledgeable, and responsible. It's critical to introduce. Uh, children to a range of books, certainly not one of these books alone, and uh, recognizing that we need to really critically look at these books, here are some questions uh, that we might consider, and I will stop there with that uh, in the interest of time. Thank you. Thank you.